Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of AF Chats. We have a very interesting topic for you today, and we have a very interesting guest, as we always do. We have Joe, whose microphone is turned off, and I need to turn it on, and I can't figure out how. This is the kind of fun I have in real time. We're live, and your microphone is off, Joe. Hang on. Yeah, we're going to get this on in one second. Okay, I think now your microphone is on. No, it is not on. Hang on, that was the wrong microphone. Now your microphone is on. It's been a while since I had audio troubles live, so it, it you know it had to happen. Just a kick of good luck to get started. So Joe is here. As we wait for people to shuffle in, as per tradition, tell us what you're drinking. What's in your cup and where are you from? I would love to know. We'll give everyone a minute or two to come in. We have a great topic, great guest. And I'm going to kick this off. I'm drinking green tea today. Usually I have my Earl Grey, but today is green tea with a bunch of berries. It's actually really delicious, and it's the middle of the day, so I needed something different. And I'm here in New York City that's kind of rainy, I think. What's up with you, Joe? What do you got in your cup? <laughs> once a day <laughs> I thought you were going to go with once a week, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, middle of the day changes everything. I haven't done a middle of the day in so long. So now it's all very different. I see in the in the chat, people are saying that they still can't hear you. Okay, hang on. We're going back into fixing mode. If you remember last time you joined me, uh, we had that issue where I, I actually pulled the plug from the, my entire setup a second before I was going to go live, and that was just that was just madness. Okay, so I can see in the comments people are saying Joe Joe's mic is off. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, let me know. While I try to figure out where Joe Mike's went, Joe's mic went. And also find my awards because I still need those, I think. So let's see, where is all of my stuff? I mean, in theory, it should all work. It all looks good. But that's always how it is. It all looks good. Sound is moving from here to here. Sound is coming in. Okay, so they can hear me at least. Okay, so we, you know, we're halfway there. And then we're gonna get Joe. How, how can I hear you and you can, they can't? All right, so for the next 15 minutes, we're just gonna figure out how the microphone works and then we'll get to the actual content. So for now, just keep telling us what's in your cup and what's, where are you from? That's what happens when I don't have a live stream with a guest in over two months. Did I also ruin? I think I also changed this. Okay, Joe's back. Well, no, you're back just visually. I also replaced you <laughs> with my mixing board for just a little bit. So if anyone wanted a tour, like a studio tour, now you got a little glimpse of what it's like. But okay, let's continue. So our microphone is going from the right place to the right place. So at least we're supposed to be doing something good. Oh, by the way, I am looking for a video editor <laughs> to hire full time. If anyone wants to help me do this, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> for real, this is not a joke. Um, we're really trying to hire a video editor right now. And where is, okay, let's see. Let's see if we can do this. We're gonna go here. I wanna click around it a little bit. I use loopback for everything, and loopback usually works amazingly well. It just works all the time until it doesn't. And I think that's what's happening now. Although, it's all possible that it's something else. Let's see. Sound is coming in. 
on this. Talk to us, Joe. Say stuff. Okay. Take it. Everything looks good. So, this is really strange. Really, really strange. All right, tell us. Can you hear Joe now? I clicked a whole bunch of buttons. Yeah, the buttons have been clicked. That's usually my plan when we're live and I don't really know what else to do. I should go for click, good, no. Click, good, no. Let's see. I don't, not, not really. It's all coming in though, so it should be fine. I see the levels are up, they're down. The only question is, where is it going? Um, I can't really restart the live stream. All right, let's see. We'll, we'll get this. We'll get this. Keep telling us what's in your cup. You must have something in your cup. There's wine in Italy, which is, uh, which is interesting. It's been a while since I've seen an alcoholic beverage on the show. I guess that's what happens when we do it a little bit later. Yeah. What is it? Five hours? Seven hours? Something along those lines? Yeah, it's evening. Okay, so sound is coming into here. It's actually working here. Oh. Okay, how are we looking now? Let's say something, Joe. I think I clicked the wrong button. I, he thinks he clicked the wrong button. Do you all hear me now? There's a sound engineer in the audience. Hey, Vincenzo. <laughs> hopefully you like the audio. <laughs> I'll explain what I did later. Hopefully this works. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Lupin's uh, fault. I don't know. Let's see. I'm not seeing anything in the chat just yet. I don't want to let Joe go and leave him and bring him back again. I can't do that to Joe. That's a comment from the chat. Aha! We got it. I think we're in hey. business. Great. We're in business. Well, hello, we're everyone. Right. After, Finally. I don't know how many minutes of downtime. I just wanted to test if everyone is paying attention. I think it's safe to say we can, we can kick this off. Almost. But... I still don't know that the RP... Okay, we're getting a whole bunch of yeses, so I just wanted to make sure to like double, triple, quadruple check, and we're doing well. So let's kick this off. We have a great topic, and we're probably not going to get to like half of the things I want to get to because there's just so much to talk about. But before, we'll say hello and welcome. We're going to talk about WWDC today, and in our annual tradition, I think this is year six, maybe? Okay. I've invited Joe, maybe even maybe five, maybe six. And Joe has been around for longer than most people that I know who are in iOS now. And I think having seen everything that has been happening, every time there's something new, it's not just new in isolation. With Apple specifically, it's new, but it's based on all these things that we know from the past. So when we talk about it here, it's so great. And this is going to be unlike any other WWDC recap that I've seen because we're not going to talk about technical stuff. Well, maybe a little bit, but we're mostly here to talk about what does this mean for business? What is this? What are all these new things, including vision? What do they all mean for technically the bottom line at the end of the day? How can you utilize these new things to get more downloads, to grow your app, and to really establish your business? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Ooh, Joe disappeared. Now Joe is blurry. <laughs> I am blurry. Very can you blurry. Hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. That's very weird. Did Zoom also decide why not? Let's have some <laughs> trouble. That's what it's look like. It's looking like. Okay. Well, let's see what's happening. <laughs> Looks like that on my side too. So I'm wondering if that's. Oh, okay. So that's not for me, at least. I don't think so. Hold on. <laughs> yep. There I am. Okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Joe's back. Gave up on me for a minute there. That's well, all you, you get know... for using continuity camera. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. That's how it's. Okay. Fair enough. I guess power for the yep. course. I haven't really used it for anything like live or production just yet. Mm. And I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so we're going to talk about WWDC. How have you been, Joe? I haven't seen you in a year. What's new? Yeah, I, it's pretty crazy, right? Uh, you know, ordinarily we'd, we'd bump into each other here and there in the halls of some sort of conference, but uh, it's Ugh. just been one of those crazy years. And um, yeah, I can't believe a whole nother year's passed already. And uh, it's, it's really great to see you. And we literally have not talked in almost a year, I think. Maybe since the last time we did this, maybe yeah. once since then. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think the last iDev. 
was yeah. I saw you at iDev. That's right. That right. That's right. So that would have been last August. So that was probably yeah. last. So yeah. a little less yeah. than a year, almost a year. But man, it's crazy. I'm so glad that conferences are slowly coming back or somewhat coming back. I went to Deep Dish Swift a month or a month and a half ago. That was amazing. I'm doing another conference here in the city, App Promotion Summit next week, and it's all real. And I like how conferences now have real plus virtual, so you can kind of get the best of both worlds, speakers from all over the world, but also the one-on-one -on -one sort of mm -hmm. things. So it's uh, I'll probably bump into you again, hopefully at some point soon. But now you're in yeah. Denver. You're so far away from me. It's difficult. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a whole three hours on a plane, but yes, I know. <laughs> That's yeah, but uh, the, the good thing is I should be coming to New York at least some point, uh, hopefully this year. So I nice. will definitely uh, stop in at the yeah. offices whenever I get there. Very cool. So let's talk about WWDC. There are a lot of big things. I, I mean, no, there's one big thing and a lot of little things that I'm really curious and excited about from WWDC. Vision obviously is what everyone expects us to talk about, and we'll talk about Vision, but. Vision is really Reality OS, which was really XR OS, which is now Vision OS. So if at any point I say Reality OS or XR OS, it's just because I got confused. It happens. But we'll talk <laughs> about Vision in a little bit. And for everyone in the crowd, if you have any questions or any thoughts you want to throw into this as we're talking about these things, this is a, a conversation, a discussion. Feel free to join us and share what you have in mind. All of this is new and all of this is interesting if you're thinking about it from the business side of things. If you have an angle that we can use this in a different way, please throw it in. So one of the biggest things that I saw this WWDC that really caught my eye other than vision was widgets. I love the idea of widgets. I love the idea of widgets being one, actionable, and two, more animated and not just very kind of dry and boring, but also moving from the iPhone to the Mac. So now we don't have to release an app figures a Mac app in order to have widgets on the Mac, on the desktop, and now we'll be able to have them. And yes, we are working on widgets in case you're curious. How do you feel about widgets? Like, what's your, what's your take on this? Yeah, widgets on my Mac desktop, uh, iPhone widgets on my Mac desktop was a feature I had no idea I wanted. Uh, <laughs> but now that I have them, I actually am running, I have one of my uh, various Macs is running the beta. Uh, and as soon as I put like my, a couple of those widgets right on the desk, I thought it would be cluttering. I thought it'd be in the way, right? but it's actually awesome. Like I don't have to pick up my phone to get a quick update on you know, stats and other things that I, I like to keep, you know, abreast of throughout the day. Yeah. So it, it's really, really awesome. And now you combine that with interactivity and it's like, okay, th this is suddenly widgets make a lot more sense on the Mac. And mm -hmm. when you put that in context with vision, you realize that like Apple wants widgets everywhere and they want you to design one widget that ends up everywhere, right? Yep, so exactly. they'll end up on your watch, they'll be on your phone, they'll be on your iPad and you'll be able to carry them with you everywhere. Now they didn't show off widgets on vision per se, but like, I just have to believe that they're going to yeah. be there. Uh, it's just like having that quick status update kind of a thing mm -hmm. is so perfect for that kind of an environment. Uh, and so I, I just, I do think it's a bigger feature than people might've realized that maybe they just saw it in passing and was like, oh, okay, a couple of widgets. Trust me, when you start using it, uh, you know, cause you know, for, on the Mac for all these years, the widgets have been there, but they've been yeah. buried over on the side and you have to kind of pull them out when you want to see them. Mm -hmm. The whole point of a widget is to have it always visible. Yep. Uh, exactly. And so, it, and I love the way they fade out of the way when you have a window in front of it, you know, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But yeah, I, I was actually really shocked. And, it, and already in the beta, it works really well. Like all my phone widgets are showing up perfectly and I don't have any trouble with syncing or anything. Oh, wow. So it just saves me pulling my phone out of my pocket a lot. That is great <laughs> you know, news basically. for really yeah. anyone who's anyone who has any sort of thing, especially when it's now interactive that you can do with the app. I mean, for us, it's a no brainer. We can put a bunch of charts on, we can put your new reviews on. And if it can animate as a new review comes in, that can be super cool. And that can, because it's actionable, can lead you to reply to the review. So you really don't have to leave the comfort of anything, but, and you don't have to go to the website and you don't have to wait for an email to come in or for a Slack message or anything. And you don't have to touch your phone. Yeah. That's just a win yeah. for me. And from a developer standpoint, I just, I feel like Apple's been doing this for, it's been moving this way in a long time. When I built my app Recaf, my whole thought process was like, this is an app that you'll never have to launch. Yeah. Right. Like once you set it up, you can control it from Siri, you can control it from your widgets. Uh, you know, there are going to be certain whole varieties of apps that you just won't ever have to bring into a full screen experience. And that's great. I think a lot of apps you know, are very good at doing one little thing and yep. I don't need to go open, you know, an icon from a, you know, a dock or wherever. Uh, just to do that one little thing. 
uh, that instantaneous actions, uh, you know, and even in the the new watch where you can just kind of scroll up mm-hmm. and see it right there on your watch page, you can have your widgets there as well. Uh, I just feel like there's a lot of that kind of, uh, again, I hate to steal Apple's term here, where like spatial computing is very apt here because it's not just about vision. Spatial computing is going to be about your data being everywhere, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, so, and your ability to do quick updates and things of that nature. Um, yeah, I, th- I think if you're not thinking widget wise, you still think you own the computer screen. You think you still own the whole iPhone screen or the whole iPad screen. Like you got to get that idea out of your head. Like you are a yeah. tiny little portion of people's work lives, <laughs> you know, and just live with the attention you get. That's such a good point. I didn't really think about it that way, especially if you think about vision and you think for the future, you can't take up all of the screen and you can on the iPhone, but you shouldn't even. And then you right. come to a full size computer or now to infinity screen that is vision you are not going to be the main attraction. And if you are, that's great. That's your app. But if you aren't, you can still be a part of it. You don't have to, it's not a Boolean anymore. Oh yeah, right. that's that's a very good point. I didn't even think about it that way. I'm, I'm excited about widgets in general, but still I think having them. So I, I love personally when data comes to me. I don't love going mm-hmm. into a website and it's kind of ironic because I have a website that gives you a lot of data, but we also <laughs> have a lot of alerts and anything else just because I like that sort of aspect. So having a bunch of little widgets that, maybe transform and do more things for me, especially with stacks, I think is going to be just, for me, super useful. So apps yeah. that have uh, widgets will be will win if you're not working on a widget and your competitors are. I think your competitors are going to see more downloads. And for App Store optimization, it's definitely going to help you, I'm pretty sure. I've seen this like hint of a boost when you have widgets versus when you don't, especially if you don't say widgets in the app's name. So if you don't mm-hmm. say widgets and you do have widgets, uh, you get a little boost, and I think that's going to be even higher, especially around the release of iOS 17. So in the next few months, everyone should be working on at least a widget. It's kind of like how everyone added in-app events, which mean nothing, just for that ASO boost. You should do the same. That would be Yeah, you get, a lot of ba- you get a lot of bang for your buck with widgets as well, because like I said, mm-hmm. if you built one for your watch app, chances are it doesn't take a whole lot of code to get it to work on all the other platforms as well. You know, like once you get into your head, I'm going to build this little thing in SwiftUI, and you get the data talking, uh, to the back end, then at, at that point, you pretty much, you know, that thing will live everywhere. Yeah, um, and exactly. So this way, your users get to decide where, you know, and you know, what's the most convenient way for them to, to utilize your app. Yeah, totally. And you know, funny thing. So you you mentioned Recaf in one of the sh- one of the talks that I watched. They have their example is actually a caffeine tracker or a water tracker. And I was like, <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> yeah, they've been doing that for a while now. They, as an example, they've been using like a caffeine tracker that they built for whatever. <laughs> I'm like, really, guys? Thanks. <laughs> and I remember when you built it for the first time, you were asking me, what do I compare myself to? What are my, who's my competitor? How do I know what's going to happen? And we had to look at other apps that are not caffeine trackers because those didn't exist. Those are just water trackers back then. So you started right. a whole trend. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> You got to build what you want, what you need. There is a That's question right. in the in the chat about subscription pages, and we're going to get to that in just a little bit, the new kind of yeah. built-in subscription pages. But while we're on the topic of built-in things, this is something I know many people are probably not going to notice and probably not going to use, which is a mistake. Joe and I were just talking about this before the show started, and that's TipKit. Mm-hmm. TipKit. Yes. I always say it's <laughs> funny. So... <laughs> Onboarding is probably one of the biggest fails of every app that I saw. And a lot of people these days are saying, if you want to make more money, you got to pop open your paywall right up front. And and I hate that because the user knows nothing about your app, but most people don't do a good job onboarding. So by the time the user tries to understand what's going on and wants the paywall, they just don't because they have no idea what's going on. So Apple kind of solved this and it's not an easy problem to solve. And Apple solved it so well. And um, I I watched the TipKit session and everything was just well thought out. The presentation is great, the triggers are great, the the concepts are great of what to show and how to show it, what not to show, don't sell with it, all those cool things that um, I was telling Joe before, I, I built a few of these in my life for the web, so I know all the pitfalls of when they don't work. And Apple kind of <laughs> thought about this. I don't know how long they've been working on it, but wh- whoever worked on it, well done. And, I have a feeling no one is going to hear about this for at least a year until I write 17 guides on how to use it and how to turn it into downloads and revenue. But I'm going to do that. I'm definitely going to do that. How do you feel about onboarding in general? You've, you've seen a lot of apps. Yeah, this is one of those things that everyone rolls their own and they've been rolling their own for so long. And I've seen it done a thousand different ways. And <laughs> every time I'm like, why doesn't Apple just give us a built-in way to do this? Yeah. 
uh, a standard ways, as something that looks familiar. Uh, you know, they kind of did a version of TipKit. But I don't know if you remember back on GarageBand and a few of their mm-hmm. own built-in apps had these kind of little pop-ups that would come up. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought, like, just give me that, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, instead, all these designers are spending all this time reinventing the wheel. And mm-hmm. it's one of those things where, honestly, if you're used to that presentation as a, as a user who's not, maybe not super tech savvy and you see this and it's the seven or eight different apps, it's going to help. The more more people use TipKit, in other words, the more people are going to be familiarized with how they, how those tips pop up and wh- how they work, when to expect them. Uh, and so, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's going to get overlooked by developers, but it shouldn't. It's one of those things that like, I wish Apple had given us five years ago, but yeah. I'm glad they finally did. It looks like yep. they took their time with it. You're right. It is actually more <laughs> robust than you would imagine. Um, but you know, it, it, there's so many of those little built-in niceties that Apple, you know, they do or don't give us based on, you know, whatever their whims are. <laughs> and sometimes it's like, why don't they just make a standard block, blank, you know? Uh, and this tip kit thing is is really great for for um, that sort of thing. I, I just hope they do more of this in the future. It doesn't mean you yeah. have to use it. It doesn't mean your designer can't come up with some fancier thing or whatever. And mm-hmm. But honestly, I have a feeling that like I said, the more apps use this, the more people will be familiar with it. And if you go and try to reinvent your own spicy way to do this, it is probably going to fail. Yeah, absolutely. And unless you want to spend all the time, you're not going to have something complete, which is, has always been my struggle as a developer. I build something, and it's amazing for this like one use case. And then mm-hmm. I go to sleep, and I wake up in the morning, and I think about this amazing other use case that's so similar, but I don't have the tooling, and I'm not going to spend any more time on it because I spend time instead of building my real product. I built this additional component, and I think Apple yeah. definitely solved this. I mean, I, I definitely plan on working on a few guides that it will explain how to use it, when to trigger notifications, uh, when to trigger tips, how did they even work, why do all of this. So as I throw myself into this and bring all that experience that I've, I've had from before, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll probably do some more live streams too. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> I, I, onboarding is just such a fascinating part of app development and, and really any development, and a lot of people just yeah. do it wrong. Yeah, a lot of people do it last is probably part of the <laughs> yes. biggest the problem is they do it as an afterthought. Oh, I have to launch. Oh, wait a second. Uh, what did I, <laughs> and they just pop up a screen and say, okay, that's mm-hmm. good enough. Uh, and they don't really think it through with like someone like, and you, you're sitting there for the last eight months, 12 months, whatever, you've been working on this app. You're very familiar with it. You have no idea what a new person mm-hmm. walking into the screen for the first time is feeling or thinking. Yeah. Uh, and unless you have a really big budget to have a lot of beta testers, mm-hmm. you know, and be able to watch them as they use that yeah. product for the first time. Uh, you know, you're going to overlook this or you're going to do a really poor job. And it really mm-hmm. is, it, it's sad because all that 12 months you spent building the rest of the app is not going to matter because within three minutes, they're going to turn yep. your app off and never launch it again. Exactly. Uh, and so these are your opportunities uh, from a business standpoint. You really should be, almost be starting from onboarding. Yeah. Uh, like what happens the first time I launch this app should be a thought you have within the first week of building your app. There's a, a funny story. I don't want to take too much time on this. And I think I mentioned this on the on the stream before. But when we developed our first app, or our app, the App Figures app, we actually uh, ended up buying a company that made an app for App Figures and had them re- redo the whole UI because we didn't like it, but we liked the app. And a year in, or not a year, three months in, we were ready. We were getting ready to launch. It was just before WWDC. And uh, Oz, my brother, who's our head of pretty much everything that looks and works amazing, looks at it and goes, OK, let me just do the onboarding. And let me do the welcome, the intro screen. And he worked on it for a week. And after a week, he goes, we can't ship this app. Like nothing aligns with what I want it to be. And we yep. ended up not shipping it. We ended up throwing away that the whole thing, all the work for the three months, the app that we purchased, the whole thing got kind of put on the side. And we uh, started working on a brand new app, took 12 months. We did all the design from scratch. And only then we launched it, just before WWDC again. <laughs> <laughs> was it a great idea? I don't know. But the app we have now is actually, I think, much better from a UX standpoint. And we're making a bunch of upgrades to it that will make it even better. So. Yeah, it's it pays to start at the beginning instead of starting at the end. Yeah, you really only get one shot at that, right? And once <laughs> a person has downloaded it and they decide mm-hmm. they don't like it, you're done. You're gone. You're either off the, you know, either they'll delete you or they'll throw you in the app library where you're never to be found again. And yeah. that's not how you're going to get that subscription revenue because they're not going to get to a point where they need to pay you. I think that's yeah. the at the end of the day, that's what it is. And a lot of people have been saying over the, over the last few months, and even when I went to Deep to Swift. I met a few people who were saying, pop up your paywall immediately when the app starts. And to me, that sounds awful. That sounds terrible. Why would anyone want to pay you? They have no idea what your app does. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's amazing. (laughs) Maybe it's terrible. Why would I give you my money? So you're already leaving them with this sort of bad taste in their mouth, like, no, 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 no. This feels scammy. 
but you give it just a good onboarding and boom, I think you pop open the, the paywall and it will be a lot easier. So mm -hmm. let's talk about paywalls. I know people want to hear about paywalls. <laughs> Apple now has a built-in paywall, so you don't have to do that anymore. And I think that's uh, an awful and an amazing idea all at the same time. <laughs> well, I will take the blame for this. I've been asking Apple <laughs> to, to do this publicly for many years because you know, there's been so much. Uh, it, it, my, actually, my, the first comment I made when I, we were watching the, the video uh, and Apple announced that, I said, how much you want to bet someone's going to get rejected using this? Because <laughs> <laughs> for how many years, right, we, we try to present our subscriptions one way or that, and there was all this controversy over, oh, mm -hmm. you know, my, my, the, the price was a little smaller than the main text <laughs> on the button and Apple rejected me. Or I didn't, I didn't put the price on the button. No, Apple rejected me. I, I did mm -hmm. this. I said this. You know, people got rejected over and over and over again. Uh, and so I thought, well, Apple, just build me a standard way to show me what is <laughs> acceptable. right? And if I do it your way, then it has to be, you know, I'm never going to get rejected again. And so they give us that, right? They give us an actual, you know, view controller. You could just pop yeah. up. Uh, you can customize it, which I thought was more than I thought they were going to give us. Customize honestly. it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but my point is, at least it, it's a way to present it. If you're a, a single entrepreneur building an app by yourself, uh, again, this is one of those things you probably did at the last minute a week before you thought you were going to mm -hmm. launch because you forgot, oh, yeah, I have to do <laughs> subscriptions, <laughs> especially presenting them. Um, and so it, it at least gives you a way to put it in there in a way that's not going to get rejected and that people will mm -hmm. understand and it's standardized. Now, you can brand it a little bit. You're, you're, there's not a whole lot. Yes, if you are a giant company making millions of dollars, you can do the research and you know, uh, you know know build a better one than this. But I'm glad that Apple gave this to us at yeah. least so that we have a standardized way. And at least I can use that to say, okay, I know this won't get rejected, so <laughs> let me go from here uh, and, and play around with it from there. Or maybe that's how you present it when you first launch and then you spend yeah. some more time and polishing it later. Um, it's, it's sort of like training wheels in a way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's better than, like I said, everyone else rolling their own and doing it poorly. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it solves the problem of I'm just getting started. I may not know how to design a real good page. I'm not going to run experiments on it because I'm just starting out. And I'm going to do everything, really. I'm going to focus on my app. And Apple is saying, you can focus on your app. Don't listen to Ariel. But you also will get kind of a, a native, kind of a, a good enough experience, which I think is good and bad. But there's also this little bit of good in it. I think enough apps are going to do it because it's going to seem like the logical way to do things because it's normalized and people are going to get used to it. And if that happens, I think it's kind of going to kill the other very spiced up um, landing pages or paywalls because everyone is just going to be so used to just seeing those boxes with a minimal sort of branding up top. And it will feel kind of friendly and it will feel safe because it's very Apple-y. And that might lead to higher conversion. So if anyone is doing a custom product page, I would actually say do both. Use a custom, pro a custom paywall, I mean, and also use the native one and A-B test them and see if that works. And if you don't have to go fancy on A-B testing, you can actually just use one for a month and then use the other for a month and see what happens. Basic mm -hmm. native A-B testing. But that's how I would go about it. Because in the beginning, I was like, no. No, no, no. What did you do, <laughs> Apple? Why do we need this? Yeah. But the more I thought well, like about I said, it, it, it kind yeah. of made sense. It totally makes sense. And it's one of those things where it's like if Apple, and this is a complaint that developers make towards Apple a lot. It, it, it's the same can be said for documentation. Just show us how <laughs> you want it. Mm -hmm. Tell us what how you would do it. Uh, and it doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but at least yeah. I'm seeing what they consider the ideal. Yeah. And then I can, I can customize from there. If I've already built a really complex, beautiful paywall, I'm not going to redo it for this. Yeah. Maybe, like you said, as, a, as an experiment, why not? It would take mm -hmm. you like a half day to put one of these together, not even. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to necessarily throw my great one out. But if I don't have one, and it's a brand new app, and I'm rushing to get it out the door, and I just kind of want it's a it's sort of a, an MVP kind of situation. Um, why not present it? And like you said, the more apps do that standard look, the more the people will just know what that is. And exactly. just like the buy button, like they recognize it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it, it just becomes second nature. They just go ahead and give it a shot. Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it might be a good thing overall. Um, like yeah. I said, as long as people don't feel like they have to do that or else, you know, it becomes yeah. like the only way to present your app, then that's, that's <laughs> a little different story. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And I do think that ultimately, if enough apps use it as opposed to something very custom, it could become a little bit more, just have that feeling of safety, which is what mm -hmm. the App Store does and why there's so much more money on the App Store than on something like Google Play where you don't have it. Yeah, totally. So, 
definitely worth a shot. As much as I don't like the idea of having yet an Apple-controlled way for me to make money, and I can't run my own experiments and I can't do anything else, but maybe in the future, if enough people use it, that would come into, now we have experiments. And that would be kind of problematic for third-party companies who are doing this right now, but we'll see. <laughs> There's yeah, a lot of- Yeah, maybe maybe Apple will make it more robust over time too and make it more customizable if it gets used enough as well. It's hard I, to know. I feel like they would have to. I feel like if yeah. they, they started something, they're not stopping unless no one touches it, and I doubt that's gonna happen. So yeah, I, I think the moral of the story is A-B test, the native experience, it just might be better. <laughs> and I think that's gonna be, definitely gonna be interesting. Now, there is one more thing, or there are a few more things before we get to vision. We're about at, a halfway, at the halfway point of this. I wanna leave a little bit less than a half for vision, but one of the cool things that, again, I don't think enough developers are gonna use, so I'm definitely gonna talk about it, that's pre-orders. <laughs> I've been talking about pre-orders for about a year now, saying if you have an app that's about to ship, you have to make it into a pre-order. Pre -order. And that's gonna also put you in that mindset of, okay, I'm going to the app store, so I need to think about screenshots, I need to think about text, I need to think about keywords. And I think that's the best time to do that, not after you do everything and you're done and you're like, okay, how do I make money now? Oh, I need screenshots. Right. But I don't have time to do all the research and I don't have time to see what kind of things people have. I'll just put something together. Um, but they're making it now so you can have a pre-order in one region and an actual downloadable app in another region, which is super powerful because you can soft launch now officially on the books. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's going to be really useful, especially for games, but I'm sure we'll see it more and more happening with apps too, just as a test how everything works and maybe even test different ways to monetize or test big things that you wouldn't just want to do in, uh, in production. Totally. And you know, it, it, it gives me one more, like, I wish they would do add one more little bit <laughs> to that. Uh, cause the whole in different regions thing is, is amazing. You're right. I could launch mm -hmm. just in Italy or I could launch just in, you know, England if I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, and if you're a startup in one of those countries, that's great. You don't have to like tackle the U S market on day one. You can kind yeah. of see how you're thinking, but this is where I like, I, where my wish comes in. I wish Apple would let us split the U S into regions. I would love to have like, you know, yeah. the, the, you know, Southwest and then the, the Northeast. Uh, I would love to be able to break America down into smaller pieces. And the reason why I say that is like a couple of years ago, I was, well, for a couple of years, I was working uh, with a startup and we were building an app and we were basically, we basically soft launched it in a certain cities, like in San Diego, in Austin, in Boulder, where I am here. And basically we, but we had to launch it in all of, you know, the entire United States, mm -hmm. but we concentrated on those cities in terms of, of our uh, acquisition, user acquisition. Yeah. And it would have been awesome to just say, this, this is only available, you know, here, you know, just to block off all the, because for everyone else who downloaded the app, if you just happen to find it, which I know in the app store is almost never going to happen if you're not trying. <laughs> uh, but if you're in Florida and you download this app, it was useless to you because there was mm -hmm. no community built around it because we weren't trying to build that. Yeah. I would love it if Apple would let us pinpoint smaller regions uh, to, to be able to focus on. That would be awesome. I would not be surprised if that's something that will come in the future because if yeah. they're building this whole system, and we know from financial reports that they do understand the concept of states, that <laughs> might be something that will eventually integrate. Maybe yeah, five years things, from now. Yeah, all things Apple, you have to remember, is all built on iTunes, right? So yeah, if, it, if it existed in, in music sales back on <laughs> Apple Music, uh, back in the iTunes day, this, then it's possible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll see it in 10 years. Who knows? Five years? Right. 10 years? Right. 15 years? At some point in the future. <laughs> yep. They will drop web objects someday. <laughs> yeah. There was, a, there was also a lot of talk, if we're talking about pricing, about the 900 price points and region and uh, base region pricing. And I think they talk about it as if it's something really, really clever. But at the end of the day, this is just you set your own price, kind of. Yeah. And I, I think talk, calling it 900 different price tiers or price points or price levels, that's just so scary. I know even the users we talk to when we do support, like, are you going to support all 900? Yeah, it's just a number right. <laughs> at the end of the day. If you can support five, you can support 900, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's... So uh, I find their marketing around it, like, grandiose for no good reason. It's kind of like set your price, but more flexibility around pricing. So um, I'm, yeah. I'm glad to see that, though. I, I talked to a whole bunch of members who price their apps very low, below 99 cents for a paid app. And I thought that was kind of ludicrous. Why would any one one would anyone have a paid app in 2023? But two, why would you have a 50 cent app? Do you really right. value your your cost, your your actual effort so little? And the answer is, in some cases, that's the only thing that works. 
So yeah. I don't know if that's a problem with the market or a problem with the app or a problem with something else, but at least there's a way to monetize. It was very easy. Interesting. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it feels like one of those changes that came about because there were a couple of really big companies pressuring Apple. Like, I don't <laughs> want to charge four ninety nine. dollars I want to charge $5, please. Yeah. You know, like, and I think that part is the most interesting. Like, try your app for a while at the rounded off, you know, $10, mm -hmm. $5, you know, or your in-app purchase even. Uh, and see if that makes a difference between four ninety nine. That that psychological barrier, like everyone knows that four ninety nine is five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So just like throw it out there, see what happens. Um, I don't know if anyone's been doing that yet, but I imagine um, that's going to be one of those things that we'll see lots of articles about. Like, hey, I did so much better at, at yeah. fifteen dollars or at sixteen dollars versus twenty dollars. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and like you have to figure that stuff out for yourself and experiment. It's yeah, and absolutely. so more pricing tiers just means more experimentation, more opportunities mm -hmm. to try, which know? makes so me happier. More experimentation yeah. is always better. We experimented with, uh, with our prices for so many so many iterations, and we try the actually rounded off numbers, and we try the fourteen fifty and the fifteen and the twelve ninety nine, and ninety nine just kept on winning time after time. It's <laughs> as if we're conditioned. I guess yeah. after the nineties, where all the books came out that you have to try ninety nine cent pricing. Now we're all just that's how it has to happen. We're yeah. not going to try anything else. <laughs> But it's definitely something that I think having the ability to experiment with is something people should do, especially around subscriptions and in-app purchases. I've helped so many developers just think about their subscription pricing and just thinking about it before even deciding what to do is a whole thing. Just getting yeah. into the mindset of, so I'm not just gonna guess at a price and hope that it works. Correct. Yeah. We're gonna actually do it <laughs> like adults. That's basically how it works, yeah. <laughs> That's how everyone successful did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to try different things. We're going to do different things. And whatever doesn't work, we'll stop. And whatever works, we're just going to be happier. Like, don't you want to be happier? I don't know. That's just... So now we have more options. And, and I kind of yeah. like that. Um, there's also one more thing that I think was a requirement. Uh, product page optimizations, which are like the A-B testing version for App Store Connect, can now run beyond or even as you make updates to your app, which sounds so silly. Why would you even need to think about this? If you upload a new app, it shouldn't break anything. But right. now we can do that. So that means, from, from my experience, what I've seen is that developers will just run very short campaigns because they want to update their app. They don't want to hold off on updating their app. And that might not be enough data to make a real decision. And A-B testing is all about data. You can't just guess. So now we can get more data and not be stuck with, oh, we can't do this anymore because we have to push out a new version for a security fix or something. So I think that's totally. a, and a that saves a bit. ton of arguments between marketing departments and developing, mm -hmm. you know, engineering departments yeah, all, exactly. all over the place. Yeah, like oh, we're in the middle of this experiment, we can't change, but we have a bug. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it was a silly uh, limitation that Apple, luckily, uh, you know, it, and it is it is Rectified. proof that they listen uh, and they yeah. are. It takes them longer than it, we want it to every time, but they eventually listen uh, and they do make these kinds of changes and give us more opportunities, which is great. Yeah, definitely. This has been, I think, one of the WWDCs with the more little things for developers that I remember. Last year wasn't exactly the same way, and the year before wasn't exactly the same way. They're all good. And we got a bunch yeah. of good things like product page optimizations, but this one is also full of these little nuggets like TipKit, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. So one last thing before we jump into reality, into I, I knew I would do this. I knew I would do this. Into Vision. <laughs> um, you can actually do product page optimizations for a pre-order app now. So if you do have an app to launch, definitely pre-order it. And if you can, definitely set up a campaign to test it because the more data you have, the better. And if you have your app out there, might as well run a test. I say to a lot of developers, you should always have an A-B test running at all times. That's I used to run the App Figure site like that for years. And we tested everything, words and colors and buttons. And it would just be so much information that we can take. And we learned how to do our emails from our homepage. It, it was all just amazing. And Apple gives that to you for free. so. Go ahead and do it, and definitely do it for your pre-orders. And I stress, do a pre-order. It makes so much sense. I've covered so many apps on my newsletter that have just kind of jumped into the top of the App Store on day one, only because of pre-orders. Apple Music Classical, Classical, Classic, whatever the name is, it's, it's all a mouthful. They became number one on day one, and everyone thought they were just cheating the system somehow because it's Apple, so they just dragged their app to the top of the charts. And the answer is no, they didn't. Pre-orders all the way. They just know how to use the system, or they listen to me, one of the two. Right. 
So yeah, um, so you're basically taking two, three weeks worth of sales and putting them on one day. So of mm-hmm. course you're going to jump up the chart. Exactly, <laughs> it makes perfect sense. Yeah, <laughs> and Apple might at some point actually take off those when it comes to calculating the rank. So do it quick before they stop doing that. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Mm-hmm. But okay, the long-awaited moment. Let's talk about vision or reality or XR. Let's talk about the <laughs> goggles, which is the emoji everyone uses now. How do you feel about the goggles? You know, this is one of those things that for a long time, uh, you know, the rumors have been swirling for years, right? And obviously Meta has been doing this and you got the Oculus and you got the all this, uh, you know, so many different products and I've never been in the least bit interested. <laughs> and I just knew that as soon as Apple did one of these, <laughs> You know, one of two things would really happen. Either I would say I'm going to buy it and then use it twice and put it down and never use it again because it's it's a silly thing. Like people have just been trying to convince me that AR, VR, whatever you want to call it, is is the new whatever. And then <laughs> Apple comes out and they present it as spatial computing. Uh, and it's not games, uh, mm-hmm. which are fine. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not just <laughs> watching movies in 3D, which, okay, you know, usually 3D movies make me dizzy. Uh, usually, mm-hmm. you know, any Same. kind of VR experience make me dizzy. Um, but as soon as they presented it as a way to be productive, right? So if mm-hmm. I take away this giant monitor in front of me and I just have goggles on that are showing me what's on my Mac, but then I can also have my iPad stuff over here and I can have my mm-hmm. messages over here and I can have, you know, that suddenly clicked for me. And I, I like, again, you can call me an Apple fanboy, whatever, but <laughs> they presented it in a way that I think the mass market is finally going to understand what the heck this mm-hmm. is good for other than playing some games. Right, which is not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. Like, but it's not like I was not going to pay thirty five hundred dollars for a gaming system. <laughs> but this is something that I can actually see myself using. Not, you know, we were talking earlier. Not at family gatherings. I'm not going to be that weirdo <laughs> with walking around and taking video of everybody. But, like, in my office where I spend most of my day by myself anyway. Right, and there's no one else around. That's very true. Why wouldn't I want to turn my whole office into my workspace? Uh, and so it feels like it's, you know. The way they integrated it in, the, to me, the killer apps for this and, the, and what blows away anything meta and they're like, forget about the technology. It's it's obviously way more advanced than anyone else's headset. That's why it's more expensive. Um, you know, the frame rate, the re- re- refresh, uh, 4K in each eye, mm-hmm. all that stuff. It's like way beyond. Uh, yeah, right? Incredible. But that's not the key. The key is that on day one, this thing is going to have millions of apps because yep. it runs every iPad app. It runs every uh, iOS yeah. app, right? It's going to run every – you're going to be able to run your Mac from it, mm-hmm. right? And you could do all of that simultaneously. It's finally bringing all those things together. And you know, to me, that was the killer app that that this thing has been missing. It's not something I plug on or do to escape life. It's exactly. something I use in my everyday life. Um I don't know what it's going to feel like. I don't know. I, 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 the only thing I've heard from people who are gushing about it, pretty much everyone who's used it, all these YouTubers who Apple very wisely didn't let film, but let them use it for 30 minutes. Like they're all blown away by it. And like mm-hmm. universally, like no one said, eh, <laughs> you know, like they all thought this is, the, yeah, and they've exactly. all used all of these, uh, anything similar. I, I almost hesitate to say that there are other, like, I don't think Apple has competitors on this, in this market, honestly, like there is nothing out there that can do what this thing does from a, just, just from a projecting my life, you know, in my, in my, you know, various uh, different productivity. Um, but it just feels like someone got the, they, like they finally understood what this thing would be useful for. Uh, and I know the price is really high and I know that's going to be a barrier and this, it's going to be, you know, there's a reason why this is the pro, right? And like, mm-hmm. I'm sure there will only be thousands, not millions of sales in the first six months. But Apple knows this and they know it's mm-hmm. going to grow over time. It's going to be a slow burn, much like the Apple Watch was, only probably even slower because yeah. the technology will take a long time to make cheaper and lighter. Absolutely. Um, you know, people, the one the one thing that people have said about it who be using it is that it is kind of heavy. And so, mm. like, they like the two hour battery life is probably a blessing, right? You yeah. can plug it into a wall, <laughs> uh, but you'll probably want to take it off after two hours anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but either way, like, again, it doesn't have to be a be all and all. It doesn't have to be the only way I work. It doesn't have to be, take over my entire life. Uh, you know, people are worried about the dystopian idea that like we're all going to be walking around like zombies and not really talking to each other. And I'm like, no, we can use this thing for an hour and then go outside to the park. You know, <laughs> like we don't yeah. have to use it all the time. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm extremely excited about it. And I did not think I thought I would reluctantly buy one of these things just because I buy everything Apple makes <laughs> right? and like <laughs> use it like once in a while. I have a feeling I'm going to actually want to use this thing regularly. And that really excites me. Interesting. So two things. One, your camera disappeared again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no At least worries. you can still hear me. There I am. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was also good. I didn't want to stop you. 
Uh, but two, I, I think you're right on a lot of things here. I, I think the quality of the device is going to be not a differentiator in a sense that, okay, this is going to be better than Meta, better than Quest, better than some of the other ones that exist, is that this is going to be different than the other ones. Yeah. The other ones are definitely making my eyes hurt. And there's a comment in the chat. Um, Raphael saying he's curious if there are any detrimental effects on the eyes if you use it for so for just because you have these humongous screens so close. Right. Probably. I mean, when they <laughs> invented X-ray all the way back in the day, they used it for these silly purposes, and a lot of people got cancer. So I imagine there's something that someone yeah. will figure out. But as much as I, I, I like, I love the idea. I love the technical side of it. I like the conceptual side of it. I am scared that we will turn into zombies because there are <laughs> going to be people who will not leave this at home when they go to the park. They're just going to yeah. walk around in the park. And and my my problem with that is, and this is also good for business, is it's not that you're going to go to the park with the intent of I'm going to live in my own reality and I'm just going to walk in the park with the assist of cameras. It's you're going to go to the park to you know see the flowers bloom, see the the trees do their thing, and hang out with your friends. But then all of a sudden, you know that widget that was on on the side is going to pop open and say <laughs> you have this new review, and this review is right. going to be negative. Someone is really angry because you're only using the built-in type of subscription uh, subscription paywall, and now emotionally you're going to be like, oh crap, someone is upset at my app, and now you're no longer paying attention. And you can say that's happening with the phones too, and that's true. I went to the park today. Everyone at the park, maybe 90% or 80% are like this, on their phone, yeah. walking, taking care of their kids, sitting on the park bench. But at least the phone is super snappy to just put back into your pocket and be like, okay, I need to be in the moment. And this, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be like, hang on, let me close my eyes so I don't, don't get disoriented when I take it off and then take it off. And then where are you gonna put it? You need to come with a carrying case. Uh, so that's gonna right. be a whole thing. But for the office, I think this is gonna be great. And I think this is where the real opportunity for the for the headset is and and Apple should have spent more time on this. They did a little bit of uh, the guy was working on the on his Mac and and kind of looking around at a room that looked partially 3D, but that's really to me the use case. Maybe watching movies on it is going to be cool and you can have your friends on the right side or maybe it's even the MLB deal that I believe they have. There's a lot of talk about the MLS also being on this and the MLS is trying to get to make some noise these days if you follow. Um, so. Mm -hmm. That could be really cool, but I think for, for the widgets, for the productivity, for really all those things where you don't mind having this on your head for two, three hours. And they say it's a full day when you're plugged in, which I thought was hilarious. It's kind of like forever <laughs> when you're plugged in. That's the whole idea. <laughs> right. But, uh, but it is a good point that if you, if you do use it for, let's say, two, three hours at a time or an hour or two at a time, depends on how the battery will eventually work, um, you can see it as a productivity device. This is a second monitor and a lot of us have second monitors. This is the kind of thing that you can run with really any app that you have. And that's actually a, a small little point. I don't know if by default all the apps are gonna be there. I imagine they will be there, but I think you have to go into App Store Connect and uh, there's a page that shows you if your, if your app meets the, the criteria to be on it. So if your app doesn't, you should do whatever it is that's necessary to make it available on day one, even if it's not a native experience to XR, I mean to Vision. Even if it's only just use my app, because I'm thinking, and, and I had the same uh, same comment when the M1s came out and Apple said, you can now bring your apps, your mobile apps to your desktop. And I thought that's right. cool. We'll use all of them kind of as little experiences so I can have my charts from the app figures app on the side of my screen and I don't need it to run at all times and I don't need it to be in my face. And that's gonna be exactly it. Like imagine if you're just looking to your left and you have all your data and you're looking to your right and you have all your notifications and you don't have to now move your mouse to the right place for the notification to open. And to me, the opportunity is gonna be, if you remember the first day of the iPad, it's kinda like that. It's not the first day of the Apple Watch, it's gonna be like the first day of the iPad. Still an expensive device, not a lot of people are gonna have it. There's a ton of hype. We had a game on the App Store back then, this was way back in the day, and, uh, and I had to be the one who pushed it into the App Store to the, the HD version, so it's there on day one. And, and it was amazing, it was such, uh, such a good rush and such a good boost. So I think from an app, whether it's an app store optimization standpoint, you're gonna get a boost if you're on, on, X, on, on Vision, um, no doubt. Also, you're gonna get a brand new search page. So now you're gonna be able to search for more things. Now you have two search pages, the iPhone search page that also boosts Vision, and the Vision search page that, well, has to boost Vision. I think that's just amazing. but. Just make sure that you go into App Store Connect and double check that your app beats the criteria and do whatever you need to do. You have time. And they didn't stress that enough in the, in the talk about 
App Store Connect for reality or XR or spatial. Uh, but that's they, they said you can make a new app, you can add this to an existing app, or you can just check that it makes that it fits. Check that it fits. It has to fit. That's kind of <laughs> my take. But but here's my other thing. Like I, I like the whole idea, and I like being number one on day one, and I, and and I think that's how some apps will become what the go tos. Both because they'll have a lot of experience after they get the feedback from reviews, uh, but also because they're just there. But there's not going to be a lot of devices out there. So who's going to take the time to, to do this? Which I, I imagine big companies and small indies, but the middle, I think, is it's, it's going to be tough. How do you allocate time for something that is so new? And it's a whole new paradigm. How do you even uh, design for something like this? How would you go about designing for something like this? Like, what are your, Where does your thought process start? It's a great question because even to simulate this in the simulator, which we don't have yet, but we will <laughs> eventually, uh, is not easy, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're not getting the same experience. As, uh, remember back in the day, you were talking about iPads. Uh, you know, we were we didn't have an iPad to put in our hands, so mm -hmm. like a lot of people literally made clay models of iPads and I had remember. cardboard cutouts to see like, well, how far away is that button? You know, how, <laughs> how much is it to go this way? You know. Uh, and I think it's we're going to see some of that kind of experimentation. Now, Apple did announce they're <laughs> going to have labs, yeah, uh, and they're going to have a some sort of developer test kit, but you're mm -hmm. going to have to ask permission to get it. So it's not like any yeah. one of us can get, grab one of these. There's probably going to be a limited of you know a couple thousand of these available probably. to people, and you're going to have to demonstrate I'm building an app that actually needs like I think if your app is a flat space kind of app that's just going to live in this environment, mm -hmm. if you're building an app, uh, you know, like messages or like you know something like that, yeah. You can get enough like it's just going to live on a flat plane exactly. in this in this space. You don't have to worry about a whole lot. And like you said, yeah, definitely check that box. The, my understanding is that if you don't recompile your app at all, it shows up in Vision with this like kind of white background, kind <laughs> yeah. of like whatever. But then if you all you have to do is recompile and it'll show up with a cr proper Chrome and stuff like that. Mm, um, OK, for a basic iOS app now. Yep. Obviously, there are going to be limitations. You're right. Like I had to uncheck that box for uh, the Mac uh, when when M1 allowed. It's funny how Apple does this stuff, and like <laughs> they're they're kind of like precursoring what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, like you know, so when they had that little checkbox, I had to uncheck it for recap, for instance, because the health app is not available on the Mac. So mm -hmm. like I couldn't get the data into the app. So like there are certain reasons why like this won't work on Vision. I'm sure there are yeah. certain uh, situations where your app won't work at all, and you're gonna have to just bail. Yeah. Um, but at the very least, like we'll have a simulator before this thing launches next year. I would say run your app in that simulator, make sure it works. And like you said, by all means, unless you, there's some really compelling reason not to, like make it available on this device, mm -hmm. um, because I'm gonna forget about any app that isn't available on that device once exactly. I get it. Like yeah, you know, because you it will become a replacement. Like I'll be using my Mac because it's really just a monitor for my Mac. I'm not mm -hmm. like running, but if you know, you have an app that like I can't run in this environment. Like once I'm in that environment, I'm not going to leave it just to check my whatever on exactly. you know, my phone. <laughs> you know, so like yeah, you definitely want to make yourself available. Uh, but as far as like preparing for this, if if you have like an idea, uh, you know, in this kind of 3D space where this makes sense, I can I can imagine a lot of people that are building like home decoration apps. You know, like all the IKEA stuff, and like mm -hmm. they've done that kind of thing in sort of augmented reality before, where you're waving your phone around. Yeah, this is like, such an obvious use case. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of those kinds of places where you're like, you're planning an environment. Uh, if you want to build something like that, do do your best to like pay attention to when Apple's announcing this hardware development kit and yeah. get your hands on one if you can, um, or go to one of the labs if you can. Uh, you know, we had watch labs back when the watch came out. We actually mm -hmm. flew to Cupertino and, you know, sat there for a couple of days and worked on our watch apps. Um, you know, they're going to give those opportunities. And then I would say, like you said, uh, on day one, there won't be that many people like this thing, mm -hmm. not only not only will not a lot of people buy it because it's thirty five hundred dollars, but also it's going to take a while. Like people, if you have prescription eyeglasses, like yep. they need to give you certain lenses, right? So that mm -hmm. might take a couple extra days. I don't think day one is going to be a million people using it, right? Yeah, definitely. So if you're not available and to get get your hands on one as soon as you can, and yep. then test your app, like have your app conceptualized and like just get get a, a vision as soon as you can and play with it, and then ship it as soon as you can. And if you're, if you're a couple months late, I don't think it's going to be in the world. I guess that's also a good point. As long as you have a good experience, even if you have a basic experience, it's better than having just kind of a rushed, thrown together idea of a concept. Yeah, and yeah, I'd be less worried about day one, and like, like I said, get get to use it in the in the goggles once, and, yeah. you know, and then and then, the then push ship, you know. Yeah, you probably want to tweak a few things. And I think yeah. it's going to be one of those things that it's not really day one for this because it's going to be slow adoption. It's it's yeah. not a, a watch that's going to go on your wrist. It's actually going to be nice and useful. It's uh, it's not cheap at all. Even yeah. though the watch wasn't really cheap to begin with, if you add all the nice bands and everything, that's way more than a watch you can buy a small car. Although with inflation, yeah. you can't even do that anymore. But 
<laughs> this you can I'm, I'm sure you can find a small car that will fit for the price of the of vision so mm -hmm. the, the only the other thing that i was thinking of if it's vision pro apple doesn't usually do pro first so right. what is the vision not pro the vision x the vision basic what is that going to be like and is that going to be a competitor a more direct competitor to something like the quest which doesn't have a bazillion cameras and the front facing screen and then if you're designing, should you keep that in mind and design for both of those experiences if they're going to be vastly different? That's a great question. Yeah, we obviously have no way of knowing. Well, <laughs> I think the Pro is an indicator that they will, and, and this is an Apple pattern, they will yeah. come up with a cheaper version at some point. It has to happen. I don't, I don't think, given the way they've been marketing this as a, like, we're not isolating people, we swear, mm -hmm. uh, the way they're, they're trying to market that, I can't see them getting rid of that front-facing screen. Yeah, that's also true. Um, it feels like a big, it's a big competitive advantage to them compared to other devices where it is a, just a blank out. Like I literally can't see the world around me. Yeah. Uh, and so I think they're going to want to keep that, but like maybe just lower resolution screens. And, you know, like I said, like, yeah, I mean, the LiDAR is in the thousand dollar iPhone. So it's not like the LiDAR is costing them that much. Like there's definitely <laughs> ways, I think a year, it'd probably be at least another, we're talking like nine months before this thing even ships. Right. So yeah probably next April, right? And so we're probably talking a year after that at the very least before mm -hmm. we get a cheaper version. So they have time yeah. uh, to figure out how to how to bring the cost down. Um, so I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say necessarily that the pro, the non-pro is going to be, you know, what they call it vision air. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know <laughs> like, I don't know if it'll necessarily be that much less functional, but they'll have yeah. to take something out, right? <laughs> or they'll add something to the pro by then. That'll That's be true. so mind blowing. You know, that, like, uh, I don't, I don't know. That's a good question, but yeah, you, you do want to keep that in mind. Like, it, am I depending on every feature mm -hmm. that this thing has? Because when there's a lower version, that might become a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, it's if you had built uh, an app that really, really relied on haptic feedback, right. And then mm -hmm. it never came to the iPad, <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, you know, it kind of limits you that way. So you do want to, you do want to keep that kind of thing in mind. Sure. Yeah. And, and I think you're right on the timing. If, if it's going to take at least at least another almost year to get this in the hands of real people, then we're not talking Christmas rush. We're not talking the beginning of the year. We're not talking the March event. We're probably mm -hmm. talking a, almost around this time, just pre-summer. And that's going to be, that's going to be in a while, which is also good because it gives us a lot of time to build stuff for this. And if we can find the lab, go to the lab and try to see what will happen. And I really wonder what Apple is going to do with the dev kits because with the Apple TV, they had a bunch of dev kits. And even though it was a lottery and you still had to pay a few bucks, I think it was literally like a dollar yeah. or some, was it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was going crazy, but um, I got one of those and we started developing a game, just me and my brothers for fun, which never made it to the app store, unfortunately, because the remotes were just not the way we yeah. wanted a game to be. So it ended up being very not fun and we dropped it, but it was very easy to get a difficult. That was kind of the idea. It didn't really help the, the Apple TV store. I think if you look at the <laughs> Apple TV, you don't really have a lot of fun things on it. It's mostly channels and games that people try and maybe some work, but for the most part, don't. I don't think that's going to be the case with Vision. I think with Vision, it's people will probably, Apple will sell out whatever inventory they're going to have for this first batch. Just has to happen. Super expensive, I know, but people want this and enough people are Apple fanboys and they have that kind of money. If you think about it, that's like a kind of a souped up M2 right now, 3,500 yep. bucks ish. So. And it yeah. might be maybe better in terms of technology and what it has or different, but still heavy. All those screens are expensive. Yeah. I mean, the Apple Studio monitor is over $2,000, right? Mm -hmm. If you get the XDR like I have here, it's like that was $6,000. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to get, yeah. so I this is going to replace my giant monitor, right? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Uh, you know, when you look at it that way, yeah, I think more people will buy it than you might think, especially exactly. there will be certain niches of pros where this is really ideal. Like once you start yeah. learning how to work within that environment uh, and I find it really interesting because to me, it's the first platform. I mean, everyone says the iPhone doesn't multitask or the <laughs> iPad doesn't do multitask. Yes, all Unix operating systems can multitask out of the box, right? Like the iPhone, even the very first <laughs> iPhone could take a phone call while you were listening to music. Like it was mm -hmm. possible to do multitask, right? But this is the first platform Apple's built since the Mac where out of the box, it's meant to be running multiple apps at once. Yeah. Right. They're not going to play with stage manager for three years before they figure it out. Like they've already got that figured out. You just put a window yeah. over here, you put a window over here. Right. So like it's got multiple apps in mind yeah. and interconnectivity between those apps is going to have to become part of the equation from mm -hmm. day one. And so I do think this is a, a, a productivity machine where you will see app sales much more like the watch never took off as an app store because watch apps are all free. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's also uh, this big. 
Yeah, and they're this big, and they're they're very useful for little things, but like mm -hmm. they're not something that's going to take your attention for hours where you don't exactly. see that value. Uh, and the same thing with Apple TV. It's more of a, like I go to my TV to turn my brain off, not mm -hmm. to turn it on, as Steve <laughs> yeah. Jobs famously said, right? So this thing is like you turn this thing on to turn your brain on. Yes, you'll mm -hmm. be entertained sometimes, but I think more than often than not, you're going to be working on this thing. And so there's a lot of value opportunity here to make an app that people will want to pay for, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think one of the last takeaways, because we're running out of time, one of the main takeaways for me was if this is going to be some sort of a productivity edition, some sort of a, it's going to be have a lot of utilities, those can be more expensive. So we're no longer looking at either a very low cost apps or something along those lines, like you would see now in the store, because on your phone, you know, phone is small. So at the end of the day, if you're not a big company, if you're not using this on your Mac, if you're using this on a small device, it's always difficult to to make the equivalence between it's a small device, but it's a lot of money. I'm not going right. to pay you know three hundred dollars for an app that's this big, and it doesn't make any sense, obviously, because value is not really combined with physical space. But now we solve the problem. So if you want your app to be big, you can make it big, and that could have an impact on pricing. So. Hopefully, what we'll see more of, especially with those 900 price tiers, we'll see more of that experimentation. And what used to be the race to the bottom back in the day when paid apps were all the rage, um, hopefully now will be a race to profitability, which is something that if you think about it more and more, you realize that's the way to do it. Because a lot of the apps that exist now that are charging now, and I'm not talking about big companies. I'm not talking about the Tinders and the Microsofts and you know all the big ones. I'm talking about the... I had an idea and I think I can turn it into something real and I think I can make enough money to sustain my family, should I give it a try? I think the answer now, more than ever before, is absolutely. And when I was at the conference last, I met uh, a few developers who told me that because of things like App Store optimization and Apple search ads, they were able to drum up enough downloads for their apps to actually go indie full time. And not indie in a sense that they want to be small, indie in a sense that they're independent. So they're not working for anyone, they're running their own apps. They're doing their own thing, and they're actually successful. So that's that's really amazing. And with some of the new things that we saw this time, I think that's going to be even easier. Tip kit, uh, subscription pages, all the custom uh, product pages, and pre-orders, and all those like little things. Like you were saying before, an entrepreneur who wants to make an app can now do it in a way that's that's going to drive something that looks and feels a lot more complete, a lot more finished. If you think about websites from back in, in the 2000s, you had all these people who were trying new things because app store, I mean, search engine optimization was easy. And you could see that they're doing an awful job. The design just wasn't there. And then templates started happening. And now everyone has the same website or same looking website, but at least it looks good. At least it's presentable. So if I'm presented with it for the first time, I'm not thinking, well, what is this? Who designed this in paint? But instead I'm thinking, okay, looks like all the other websites I saw. Like I know that if I scroll now, it's it's going to look like this here and like this here, and I think that's what's happening. And you bring that to yet a screen that is infinitely sized, and now you can put your small apps and you can make them big and you can charge more for them, which is from a, a philosophical standpoint is funny. From a psychological standpoint and a behavioral standpoint is very exciting, and from a technical standpoint is not difficult. So that's that's where I see the future going towards. If this is going to be about utility, and if this will actually have, if this will be comfortable, if my eyes are not going to strain, if I use it for more than ten minutes, if I can replace my monitor with it, why would people not use it? And if the price drops just a little bit, it doesn't have to be that low because we all have Macs at the end of the day, or we all have some sort of a laptop. Drop it to I don't know, fifteen, nineteen ninety nine at some point. It'll probably be boom, all gone for the next five years. So. Definitely a great opportunity. And it shouldn't be, and I think for developers who are thinking, I don't even know how to begin designing for something that's going to live in my living room or on my desk. Like, don't just design an app that makes sense when you look at it. That's really it. Totally. Yeah. And then just to bring back what you said about like you going to a conference and meeting these young people, that, like, I think a lot of us are listening to the same, I, I count myself among those old people uh, in this industry who've been around for a long time, maybe did well for a while and then got burned out. And mm -hmm. those are the voices that are the loudest. Yeah. Uh, but there is a community, there is a large, like growing, I should say, maybe not large, but growing community of young entrepreneurs that are that are doing well, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like Absolutely. there's a surprising number of apps, people I know that I talk to who are actually starting to make their living again on the app store. They've mm -hmm. figured it out. Uh, it's not an automatic thing. Nope. It takes a whole lot of work. Um, but they take, they see these opportunities and they seize them. And, you know, for every 10 who try one does pretty well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you just have to 
uh, if you have that in mind, you think, oh, it's all over. I missed, I missed the boat. You know, 2008, you know, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know? The gold um, rush is over. Yeah, I mean, nope. the people who are burned out, who who lost out, uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be crying for the rest of their lives, and it's yeah. okay because they knew what it was like once, and I get that. <laughs> um, but you know, the, there are it doesn't mean that there aren't people out there doing it, uh, yeah. and I do think vision is a huge opportunity uh, to see that happen again. Absolutely. You know, what was actually yeah. uh, mind boggling for me, mind blowing for me when I went to when we went to IDEV, I met so many people who don't know any of the old any of the old circles, any of the cliques. You throw some names on them, and they go. Who is that? Like yeah. what? Five years ago at a conference, everyone would just go and aggregate around that person, and now no one cares anymore. And it's because this has become a community of makers, which I, I yeah. personally love a lot more. I thought the clicks, while nice, just needed to end. We needed to, this to grow beyond, and that's what I saw when I went to Deep Dish Swift. Um, so many people who are successful, who are doing their thing, happy about it, and like you said, it's a lot of work. You have to go through and you have to do, you have to build a great app and you have to make sure your design is right and you have to make sure your marketing is right and you have to make sure your ISO is right. But it's not like it's impossible. It is possible. It's just something that you have to commit to and you have to say, okay, one day a week I will do App Store optimization or one day a month I will do App Store optimization and I will know a designer. I will commit to knowing a designer who can make stuff pretty for me. Or I'll use Midjourney or I'll, you know, I'll try something and I've seen a bunch of developers who are doing a lot of stuff with generative AI, either for icons or for other things. And you can cobble together all these things and use all these native new things, and boom, you can be successful. So vision is really where that's gonna play out, I think, in about a year. We'll see where that takes us. Uh -huh. Cool. I think that's all the time we have. We ran out a little bit late, but that's fine because we started a little bit late. Hopefully everyone <laughs> was able to hear Joe this entire time and not just me, because that would have been hilarious. If people are just lying to us, I'm like, hey, we can definitely hear Joe. Continue to record and stream. You got this. <laughs> and if not, hopefully I echoed enough of the sentiment to make this make sense. But no, everyone could hear you, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. There is a bunch of stuff that we didn't get to talk about. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't really apply here, but is cool, like find my remote. Yeah. Why didn't they do this before? This makes so much sense. <laughs> Such a beautiful thing. Mm hmm the little things, yeah. also Swift data, finally, after all these years, core data is yeah. just scary, especially, I think, for the younger crowd that's just getting into it. I know enough developers that only do Swift, only do Swift, which I find just in my mind, I just I don't understand how can you not know Objective-C, and the reality is, why would you? Swift right. and Swift UI, and you're good to go these days. So Swift data is going to be so much easier. But um, all those didn't really make sense from a business standpoint, so I, I left them out. Uh, but there's probably more stuff. I'll probably do a write-up on this. So if anyone has anything that they really care about, drop that in a comment, because the chat is going to close in a little bit. Drop it in a comment, and it might make it into my next guide. Um, other than that, if you haven't already, you should subscribe to the channel, because I'm going to be talking about all these things in the future. And as a marketing guy, I have to continue to promote myself, because when you promote, it actually works. It's the same with asking for a rating on the App Store, which I say at pretty much every live stream. So definitely do that. If you want to find Joe, Joe, are you still on Twitter? Are you still prolific on Twitter? Not really. Yeah, okay. I've kind of dumped the whole Twitter thing. Once they get rid of the third-party apps, I was like, I'm uh, done. Yeah. I'm not going to use their app. <laughs> I'm a little bit tough. on Mastodon and uh, Micro.blog. You can find me there, uh, Joe C on Micro.blog, or just Joe Chiplinski on uh, Mastodon.social. Cool. We'll link to all of those in the description just in a little bit. So you can find Joe if you want to just say hi, if you want to follow mm -hmm. Joe for to hear about things. I'm going to be on Twitter. I'm always on Twitter, so I will have my information on the bottom as well. And that's where we end. I'm going to talk about this and much more over the next few months as we actually get to use all these things and have some more direct thoughts and see how they apply for App Store optimization and Apple Search Ad and everything else that's going on with marketing on the platform. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter to find those out. And that's it. Joe, thank you very, very much for being a guest on this. It's always fun to have this conversation. And I never go into this with a real outline. I go in thinking, here are the four things that I really like. Let's see what Joe wants to talk about. <laughs> and somehow we <laughs> run out of time. So I think that's yeah, always I, healthy. If there's ever a time where the two of us uh, run out of things to say, like in less than an hour, that's, <laughs> there's going to be something really, really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If Especially happens, when we haven't talked in several months. Yeah, exactly. If that happens, you know that I'm not real Ariel, Joe is not real Joe, and it's just uh, some sort of a, a virtual assistant doing our talking for us, which I'm sure <laughs> will happen in the future too. <laughs> but maybe in a year we can do we can do this using using goggles. That, that would be, be awesome. hilarious. 
if I just sit in front yeah. of the camera and ugh. okay, we got to do this. <laughs> I got to if there are Apple people in the who are listening right now, please send me a dev kit. I need it. Yeah. And Joe one too. Obviously, we, right. we need to make this work. We have to test this for live streaming purposes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to apply for a dev kit for that particular purpose. <laughs> we'll see go. if I get one. <laughs> All righty. Thanks again, Joe. Thanks, everyone, yeah, for joining us today. Hopefully, you learned something new. I'll see you in a new live one of these uh, in just about a month. So we'll see you all later.